Hey everyone, welcome back, the one and only here, back at it again with a very fun video. Today, we'll be looking at the battery drain test for the 2019 Samsung Galaxy S lineup. Yes sir, you know how we do it on this channel. Our three belligerents are the Samsung Galaxy S10e, the Samsung Galaxy S10, and last but not least, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. This test was an interesting one for me and surprised me in many ways. All I have to say is, I'm impressed, but you'll see what I mean soon enough. Quick shout out to everyone who watched my prior battery drain test for the entire 2019 iPad lineup. It has already hit more than 100,000 views and I can't thank you guys enough. Before we roll into the intro, pause this video right now and comment down below which Samsung Galaxy phone you think will come out on top. Did you do it? Let's do this. Alright, so the tail of the tape will be quicker on this one than on my iPad video, I promise. But it is important to go over the tail of the tape because some of us are huge tech enthusiasts and others aren't. So with that being said, let me start off by saying the biggest drawer of power is going to be your screen. So in theory, a bigger display will be more power hungry than the little guys, but if you're smart, you'll notice that more times than not, a bigger display equates to a bigger phone, which equates to a bigger battery, most times. With this, most phones like say the iPhone XS and XS Max have differences in screen size, but is compensated with a bigger battery on the latter to achieve a similar battery life performance. Here, it is also important to note pixel density and display resolution. If a screen has less dense pixels or say a higher resolution, this will ultimately affect battery as now the phone has to output more or less pixels. It is also important to mention that all of these three screens are AMOLED panels, meaning each pixel is individually lit. It's a lot deeper than that, and I may cover a video explaining AMOLED versus LCD one day, but just know AMOLED makes your blacks be completely black and in general will get richer colors. Okay, now officially the tale of the tape. Who will be crowned Samsung Galaxy S Battery King? First up, we got the Samsung Galaxy S10e with an impressive flat 5.8 inch AMOLED display with a screen resolution of 2280 by 1080 with a 3100 milliamp hour battery. It is important to note, the S10 and S10 Plus have improved ultra quad resolution options, but to keep this test as consistent as possible, I matched up the resolution to all be equal since the S10e does not have that ultra 3040 by 1440 resolution. Up next, the S10 has a 6.1 inch edge display, which can be as high as 3040 by 1440 resolution, but again was toned down as if we left this on this resolution, the phone would now have to work harder to pump out that crisper and juicier resolution. The S10 also sports a slightly larger 3400 milliamp hour battery. When we go to the S10 Plus, we see a massive 6.4 inch edge AMOLED display with same resolution as S10 and a beefier 4100 milliamp hour batteries. Again, the resolution was toned down from the WQHD Plus to the FHD Plus. As always, a lot was done to make this as fair a test as possible. Because these are AMOLED displays, wallpapers were identical. Each phone was charged up to 100%, hooked up to the same Wi-Fi network, auto brightness turned off, brightness was put to 50%-ish instead of my usual 85 to 100%-ish, and you'll see that it equated to much longer times. As such, it is conclusive that turning down your phone brightness does equate to significantly better performance from your battery as you'll see. Now, at this point, I'm gonna do some selfish self-promoting because these Samsung phones have this annoying 10 minute auto lock which can't be changed to indefinite setting like you can on iPhones or iOS devices. By that I mean, after 10 minutes, the Samsung screen will be turned off Unlike the iPad test, which has an indefinite setting, allowing the screens to never turn off. 
As such, this test was a big sheesh and took a lot of work and effort, so if you appreciate that, please consider subscribing and give this video a massive thumbs up as it helps a lot. The endless hours of recording and making sure settings and brightness and everything are identical are very tedious, so I appreciate you guys and it's because of you that I pump this content out so you are a better versed tech consumer and to see which galaxy suits your needs. Okay, with all the introductions out of the way, now it's time to finally dive into the battery test. Let's go. So my first test was the Netflix test, since I find that a lot of the times at the end of the day, I find myself streaming a good little episode of The Office or even binging on Narcos Mexico for like the seventh time. I decided to let Netflix run for a good 90 minutes and got some interesting results. To my surprise, each phone was able to hold out much better than I had anticipated. The S10e was at a very healthy 86%. The S10 at same, 86%, and the Gargantuan S10 Plus at an impressive 88%. 12% battery drop for 90 minutes of Netflix? That's not bad at all, I'll tell you what. My second test was a test that relates to just about all of us. A lot of us are glued to our phones 24-7, I'll admit, but there are some times when we finally lay our phones down or in our pockets or purse. So naturally, I needed to do a standby test. Now the Galaxy phones have long had the always on display feature, which is nice and doesn't use a lot of power, but keep in mind, it is still drawing a tiny amount of juice to keep that display always on, as negligible as it is. I turned off the main display and let the phone sit on the always on display for a little over two hours and came up with the following numbers. S10e at 83%. S10 just loves swagger jacking the S10e because again, same at 83%. And finally, the mighty S10 Plus at 86%. Pretty impressive so far for being off the charger for close to four hours now. The third test is my classic camera recording test to mimic real world camera usage, whether it be by taking videos, snagging pics of funny moments on the fly, or Snapchatting. I recorded at the same setting on all three phones for 20 minutes, and after 20 minutes recording my table, we get the following results. The S10e is packing on some kind of steroids for such a small device since it comes in at 76%. The S10? Try to guess what it dropped to. I'll give you a second to guess. Same, 76% as well, and the S10 Plus at a very healthy 81%. Here's where the test actually gets interesting. For the next hour, I was on Twitter to mimic the time spent on social media, but remember how I said Samsung phone's max display timer is 10 minutes? Yeah, it was a huge stroke to have to get up while trying to take a small snooze to keep these phones on and awake. So if you see me grabbing the phones a lot or touching the displays, it's to keep them awake and was super annoying. It's also a good time to point out that all three phones rock the same exact chipset, that being the monster Snapdragon 855, which as you can see, already four hours in, is a beast keeping all these phones juiced up. And if you haven't seen my other Samsung Galaxy reviews, make sure to check them out as they go in detail about specs, pricing, colors, and everything else you need to know about the new S lineup. If you watch those videos, you'll know that the S10e has 6GB of RAM instead of 8 for the baseline models, so we'll see if this has any kind of effect on our battery test. Anyway, after a whole hour on Twitter and having to keep the displays on, we arrive at the following results. Samsung S10e at 69%. S10, you already know, finally changed up the mix and fell to 67%, while the mighty S10 Plus was at 73%. Now I was really interested for the next test. If you're a big Samsung Galaxy fan, you'll know that the Galaxy S line now has a nifty little feature called PowerShare, which allows you to transfer over battery to other Qi-enabled devices, which I think should come standard in all phones here shortly as we approach a new decade. What I did was test out how much it would drain by using my AirPods case, which was at about 10% juice left and my iPhone and I did these tests independently while letting the other sit still. So in essence, each phone had the same amount of time idle and charging to keep things fair and consistent. The AirPods case was laid on each phone for precisely 10 minutes each while each phone got two turns sitting on the sidelines chilling being idle. After 30 minutes, 10 minutes on each device, we arrive at the following results. Galaxy S10e, 64%. Galaxy S10, 60%, and that result was a total shocker to me. And lastly, S10 Plus at 68%. After that, we take the exact same concept, only I was interested to see if a bigger device with a bigger battery would drain out the juice any quicker. I did the same test, only replacing the AirPods with my iPhone and got the following figures. 
S10e dips to 50%, S10 down to 47%, and S10 Plus at 57%. So here we see an interesting result as my hypothesis was correct. The bigger battery of the iPhone did drain out more juice, despite the AirPods and iPhone being on for the exact same time. Again, at this point, I applaud Samsung for having such battery efficient phones. We're several tests in and all phones are roughly at about half capacity. Crazy, I know. Of course, this is probably due to the screen being at 50%, but I thought this would be a more realistic test than having brightness on max at 100%, so you can thank me in any way you'd like for this test. Moving on, the next test is my famous temple run test, which I thought would be a continuous loop, but alas, sadly, the screen kept dimming. So every five or so minutes, I had to get up and wake the screen. Sad facts, but it's okay. After a little over half hour of endless gaming, we now see our batteries start to take bigger hits. S10e at 41%, S10 at 38%, and S10 Plus is still at a very healthy 49%. Six hours in and these phones are doing a phenomenal job. You guys give it up for our Galaxy phones for real, they out here doing the most. Penultimate test was my Geekbench score test to max out those CPUs and see how much they drop. While it's a very short test in terms of time as compared to the others, here you will see just how much the phones tap into the CPU for power. After three full Geekbench tests, we get the following figures, S10e at 38%, S10 at 35%, and S10 Plus at 46%. If you're anything like me, you're rooting for the S10 to catch up and swing on the S10e and take the lead. Is it gonna happen? Stay tuned to find out. For my last and final test, I decided to let these phones run on YouTube until they were completely drained. Since the S10 was just at about a third of juice left, I was under the assumption it died shortly after. Boy was I wrong. Not only did these guys never skip their cardio days, but they are also extremely power efficient on YouTube. The optimization on Galaxy phones for YouTube is phenomenal. Unlike my iPhone, I don't know, I'm on YouTube for 5 minutes and my battery done just dropped from 100% to 90%. I'm not sure if it's just my phone, and I'm not trying to throw shade either, I was just amazed. These phones lasted forever on the very interesting fireplace video to the point where I had an errand to run and expected them to all be dead and to my surprise, they were still going strong. You let me know which one you'll think is going to die and at what time, 8 hours, 9? 10? Sheesh! These phones are wildin'! It wasn't until 10 hours and 38 minutes that the first to go, surprisingly, is the Samsung Galaxy S10. Big shocker, I know, but not really, actually. Even though the screen on the S10 is bigger, in theory it should draw more power, and since the battery on the S10 is marginally bigger than the S10e, it kinda makes sense, but still, I was rooting for the S10 to at least catch up and make it a closer match. Its brethren, the S10e, says lights out at about 11 hours and 15 minutes in. So not much longer than the S10. So according to my test, if you're on a budget and want to get the cheaper version, looks like you'll squeeze out similar if not better battery than the more expensive S10. If we're being real, I was wanting the S10 Plus to go ahead and die real soon man, a dude gotta sleep. Our winner, the S10 Plus not only won, but showboated about it as it didn't drop until 13 hours and 40 minutes into the test. My goodness. Now, what have we learned today? First off, shout out to Samsung. These phones lasted way longer than I had anticipated, especially the S10 Plus. The other two weren't too far behind as all of them had exceptional battery. This is also taking into account that I was purposely trying to drain the battery, so in real world cases, these phones will likely last you much longer. The thing with these tests is everyone's use case is different. Also take into consideration that lithium ion batteries will degrade over time, essentially cutting down on the original charge that your phone could once hold. Either way, this test was super fun to make and hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it up for our winner, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. If you did like it, make sure to subscribe and if you originally thought the S10 Plus would reign supreme, drop a comment letting me know you're a psychic. There's a lot of exciting leaks and rumors pertaining to future tech and I will dive in depth like I always do to review everything I can for you guys to be more informed. With that being said, <laughs> I'm going to write out of this video, but I'm excited to catch everyone in the next one. Peace.